Hi guys, welcome to Live Rocks uh, episode. Today I'm here with the fabulous uh, Prosper Taruminga. <laughs> uh, welcome Prosper to my show. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much, Petra. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm I'm so excited to to have you and to have your you know your presence here because uh, you are so knowledgeable and uh, you're so out there. I think you can really um, inspire people a lot with with your own story, but also with what you do in your business. So um, you are a digital marketing strategist at Lifelong Digi Digital. Yes. Um, right. So I help coaches and consultants to actually package, brand, and scale their business so that they end up with a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Right. Nice. Yeah. And you have uh, currently the uh, the blueprint going on. Um, is that something that is still on your Facebook that people can book and uh, book a session with you? Great. So I created the online prosperity blueprint. It's a four step system that helps people to actually figure out who exactly they're speaking to, how they're going to speak to those people and how they can convert them into clients. After they've converted them into clients, how they can keep them and retain them as uh, ongoing customers. Right. Yeah. So um, how long uh, is that? Is that like, a, um, you know, on demand where people go through these steps as they go? Or are you guiding them on your time? So to okay. Say? As you would know, every person's fingers are never equal. There's never one finger that's the same height as the, as the other one. So that's how every person's business is like. Okay, So you can't put a cookie cutter to this. When I take on somebody and we start working on them, we figure out where they want to be in five years, where they want to be in 10 years, where they want to be in 30 years, and then we just reverse engineer that because everyone is totally different. So we figure out exactly what vehicle would get them get their goals and how we can possibly, you know, put things in place up until they achieve um, their ultimate goal. So mm -hmm. when people work with me, I'm working with them specifically on their business, their goals and what outcome they want. So it's not going to be cookie cutter. It's mm -hmm. specific to the individual. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess uh, I also forget to mention that you are NLP practitioner. Is that right? <laughs> well, obviously, everybody has a, a map about their mind. They want to go from one place to another. All we're just doing is bridging that gap for them. Mm -hmm. I, I find that really fascinating because you're not just teaching people technical skills, how to, how to get things done and you're not just telling them, if you do this, this happens. Um, uh, how holistic is your approach? Um, how deep do you go with your clients? I know their firstborn son's name. And I go to their birthday parties. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, if you, you can't influence somebody you don't know and somebody mm. who doesn't know, like, and trust you, um, there's a whole lot of, um, you know, services that are being offered out there, but not everyone is the same. Like I've said, you know, all the five fingers of our hands are not the same. So if you don't know somebody specifically and you don't know what their goals are, you're not serving them. Wow. And uh, in your logo, just I forgot to mention, it has the, what does it mean? What does it stand for, your logo? Uh, how would you describe it? So it's like a hand where, yes. uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll let you describe this. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This, this is um, a prosperity symbol from um, Star Wars, uh, Star Trek, actually. <laughs> and it means, so Sir, Sir Leonard Nimoy uh, mentioned this to his troops and he said, live long and prosper. Okay. Oh, so, that's so cool. So it is a salute. It's called the Vulcan salute, where you are giving people the permission to actually live long with their lives so that their business is profitable and enjoyable and they can prosper. And my name happens to be Prosper. So it worked well with, um, wow. with the way that. <laughs> Brilliant. So are you, are you a bit of a fan or was it just something that, uh, that felt right? It, it, it felt right, and my dad was a bit adventurous. Um, I mean, he could have called me James or John, you know what I mean? And I wouldn't have to explain my name, but um, <laughs> he decided to call me Prosper, so it <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be that. <laughs> I, I was wondering if you renamed yourself or, you know, like, uh, that it's just such an unusual name. Oh, yeah. It's, it's one of those names that um, you have to explain every time. Um, can you imagine, you know, as a little kid, everyone is like, Peter, John. 
Prosper. Well, <laughs> who's Prosper? Why are you called Prosper? And eventually what then that happens is it, it then tempted me to want to work a lot more. Can you imagine me sitting on the side of the road with a sign saying, hi, my name is Prosper. Can you spare me a dollar? You know, <laughs> so, so I had to live up to the name. And so it, it works out like that. Wow. Yeah. And uh, you have quite an interesting background. So you were born in the uh... Zimbabwe, am I, am, I, am I right? Yes, yes, born yeah. and bred in Zimbabwe, yes. So uh, when did you come to Australia? Um, Australia, I've been in Australia six years now. Wow. Okay. Right, yes. Yeah. So I just arrived here and I knew no one and I only had $100 to my name, which I have now turned into a $100,000 business. So. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, what brought you to Australia and what was, uh, what was life back in Zimbabwe? I mean, is your family still there? Uh, what, what is your connection back to your home country? Great. Uh, the connection is obviously Zimbabwe taught me resilience. Um, I was born in a country where up until now we've only known one president. Okay. So he's stayed in power for the last 34 years and he hasn't given anybody any space. So wow. what that... What is that? What that has created is a social decay within the whole economic sector. Mm -hmm. The people that are on top of jobs are not giving other people a chance. You know why? Because that culture has been imparted on them. They are essentially um, getting people to work until they're old, and there's no chance for the younger generation to rise up the ranks. Wow. If that makes any sense. It okay? sounds. Like, it sounds like a country of men as well. Um, there, there is a few beautiful women out there. One of our girls is actually uh, here in Australia and she's about to win The Voice if you're watching TV. So oh, how <laughs> there's a lot of people. Yes, there's a lot of people with talent there, but their talent has been, um, you know, constricted because yes. they haven't been given an opportunity to shine. So mm. had I stayed in Zimbabwe, none of this would be happening. We wouldn't be having this conversation. I wouldn't be helping all the people that I'm helping at the moment. I would not have a beautiful family and a wife that I have. Mm. So, mm. you know, that's yeah. that was where my calling was and I had to, to move, yeah. And you have a beautiful family. Can you tell us a little more because uh, you're such a family man and such a beautiful dad. Your daughter they hate me now. Yeah. <laughs> Are you always in your office like me? Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm always working. Yeah. But um, I do love my wife and I love my two-year-old daughter. They're, they're all I have at the moment. Um, I took them on a trip around Australia where we drove 13,131 kilometers. So now officially my little girl is probably the youngest um, African Zimbabwean that has gone around Australia through the outback and everything <laughs> else. And I was trying to show my wife the country that she was born in. So it's, it's one of those things that I worked far too hard last year and we had a lot of time bonding and we went all over Australia. Beautiful. That, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I have friends who did that and homeschool their kids. Um, I think they are like age nine and 12. But they lived in caravan and just had all those experience, and it was incredibly bonding for them. Do you have yeah. an Do you have interesting love story? How you met your wife? I mean, it must be interesting part of your whole story. How, <laughs> would you share that with me? I'm really curious. How I met my wife. My wife and me are two people that were just meant to connect. Um, so. When okay, let me start from 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 the behind story. I was hanging out with a couple of guys, and we went off to a Christmas party on New Year's Eve. No, not New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve. Okay, and since we had no family and no one that we knew, um, that's where we went. And I was so drunk, and that's when I met my <laughs> then wife. Um, yeah, we talk about this all the time, and um, when that happened. I I was so, so drunk when it all happened, but she came up and she knew a friend that I was with and they were just kept talking and I was, I was just making fun of her. But all of a sudden, that fun of her mm. is what then got us connected because two weeks later, I didn't even remember I had met her, but she remembered <laughs> at, at a friend's place. When we started talking and... 
I didn't even know what was going on. I was just like, did I tell you anything about me? Do you even know who I am? And things like that. And she's like, no, but I found you intriguing. You were just so drunk and you were <laughs> laughing at everyone, making fun of yeah. everyone. And I'm thinking if... If that was somebody else, they would have been like, this guy is so obnoxious. So we then started dating. Mm. And um, yeah, we started helping each other. Her parents had just recently died and I became her comforter. We did share quite a lot. And uh, one day I made a bit of money and I decided to book a hot air balloon trip. And that's when I proposed while we were above you know wow. the land beautiful so, <laughs> wow so you you are literally each other's world aren't you with no families around um it's quite special right yeah so yeah so it, it, it's it's now what has created our bond we are creating our own little family traditions mm -hmm. we are creating our own little family things so yeah our whole relationship is what we have created it mm. there hasn't been any influence from all the other wow. people outside And we've kept it like that. It's just us, me and her and my little girl. So, that's, yeah. I think that's really powerful. And thank you for sharing that. Because I've seen, you know, on your social media, it's like oh, you're always posting, <laughs> which is so cool. But I saw a video from a few years ago when you were dancing with your little girl. I imagine, you know, you were still entertainer in your family. Um, is, is that? I, I imagine you still make your wife laugh every day is that is that important to you to make her happy well I, i think i'm all she has as if we can speak she does have family around but since the death of her parents they've all just separated and people grow and mm -hmm. you know families mothers are usually the people that anchor people so now she's really concentrating on growing our little family and hopefully in the near future if i make more money we buy a bigger house and then i get a we get another baby that's the incentive um well you make very cute babies <laughs> <laughs> don't say that i might get a few phone calls here and there but um yeah we we've managed to come up with she, we're blessed she's smart and she has sort of picked up on where we are and we have made her into a giver in the society everybody looks up to her and um she kind of knows it that she's got a mission already in mm. her life mm. and she's always sharing and to see that in a kid at her age she's only two and already she's already making some sort of an impact in other people's lives is is something that's wow. admirable to yeah. watch she's gonna she's gonna be game changer isn't she well she doesn't have a choice <laughs> <laughs> yeah with father yeah. like you We've uh, left the foundation for <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to go back to when you mentioned that you literally can create anything. I think that it's so powerful and that it's where a lot of people don't have the courage to leave the family tradition or being attached to a certain place, you know, like a geographical place and start completely fresh on their own terms. I, 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 you know, I imagine you must feel really super fulfilled with your relationship and work and fatherhood. Can you see the difference? Uh, I mean, does it make you appreciate more when you see how other people live? Um, I usually don't try and judge people mm. because you never know where they've been. You never know what they've been yeah. through. It's, it's, and, not about, it's not about judgment. It's, it's, the, it's the moments of realization when you think, wow, you know, you have something so special that it's organically only yours and it's like your rules only do you know right. do you know where i'm going with this it's the same with your business like you you are a master of your own life are you, are you aware of that oh that's that's basically how this realm works um i do i do understand that um and i've got so much gratitude for where i am now and what is happening around me but it wouldn't have happened if i did not create it Because yeah. I made that happen. If I would have gone in and listened to people that do not inf influence me or do not impact me, then I wouldn't have created the business that I have, the family that I have, and putting it all together. You know what I mean? Mm. So some people do not realize that it's all in there. Mm. You've mm. got to listen to your intuition. And where you are is not permanent. Okay? Where... 
and what you're going through is just a reflection of things you haven't done. Okay, you haven't probably listened to a relationship question that you haven't answered. You haven't probably listened to a calling that you have or you haven't listened to your kids because we are expecting things to happen within them. But we don't realize that they're operating from where the things that they only know. Mm. So if you don't study people, you don't give people time to get to know you and you knowing them in retrospect, you will never create relationships. So you have to create this. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Because some yeah. people are just all in for themselves and never really stop to think about what's the other person feeling. Mm. How are they doing? What would it mean if I did this for them? What would it change in their day and their life if I told them this? Some people just walk in and say, what's in it for me? Have I had dinner? Are my clothes washed? Is there space for me to sit in the, in the lounge room? You know, is my favorite TV show on? No. You figure out what your other people are interested in. Because the more you're interested in other people, the more they open up to you, the more they let you know what's bothering them and if you can surprise them by being just a nice human being you can create whatever you want in life wow and so much so much wisdom you know and truth coming from you where did you learn this well were you born with passion for humanity like were you always intrigued by human mind and uh you know you are you it's uh, i can see that you operate on very aware conscious level not everyone lives with the ability to see that every action has a consequence, if, if it's good or bad. I am very big about awareness and consequences with my child. And uh, that's something uh, that, you know, cu cultivates common sense. Um, where, is, where is that coming uh, in, in your story? Was, who was the in influencer in your early childhood? I mean, in your early life? Was it, was it mom or dad or uncle or grandparent? There's, um, there's some things that I, I sit down and think sometimes. Um, I had my granddad only for about three months. And I had my mom for only 16 years. And I've been told by some of my family relatives in my culture that I kill people. Not essentially as in murder them, mm, but mm. when their soul is done with me, it's done. Can Does you, that make sense? No. <laughs> All right. So when Sorry. somebody when somebody comes into my life, they are coming in for a reason. Right. Okay. And and when and when their time is done, it's totally done. Oh, I see that. Right? Like an yeah. e end of cycle. Yeah. Okay. Right, right. Yep. I only got to meet my granddad for three months and he had a chicken farm and I went to stay with them because my dad was moving work. So I went there and stayed there and every morning he would pick up chickens, all right, and eggs uh, in his farm. And then one day when he was not there, I went in and I chased all the chickens and then I picked up, mm -hmm. um, you know, eggs, mm -hmm. eggs that were already hatching. And I ate one of them. So that's the reason why I don't eat eggs. That's the reason why my granddad was in my life for that particular incident. Three months after that, he died. Wow. Because he ate that egg. <laughs> I'm joking. I, I, I'm joking. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so he, he died. And that was the end okay. of him mm. in my entire life. Mm. But he left me that memory. And he always told me I'm stronger than I think I am because I was a lazy little kid. Mm. All right. And those words have always stuck with me. So his purpose in life was just to tell me that Prosper, you are stronger than you think you are. Mm. And that's a great and, message. And after he told me that that was, that was his mission in his entire life. Mm. And then came my mom. My mom died. I don't know. Um, if you know about the Y2K days, she died exactly on the 1st of January, the year 2000. And we always joke about her not being Y2K compliant. I don't get that joke. Sorry. All right. So, so, 
I mean, before before the time Microsoft was trying to get people to buy new computers and telling them that right. all the computers you had are not going to work after the year 2000. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it was a big thing. It was a big thing in wow. Africa. And yep. yeah, and the purpose that my mom really had was first of all to bring me to the world and second of all for me to meet yet another lady who then implanted the seed that I had to come to Australia. Mm-hmm. All right. As soon as I connected that, that's where I needed to go. My mom died. Wow. All right. So at 13, she took me to a school where I met an Australian lady who was on exchange and I was African, right? So she, she started opening up my mind that there's a world out there. It's not what you're seeing, the village and all the hunger and starvation. There's Australia. That was when I was 13. Okay. And I got connected with that lady um, in, 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 in sort of spirit. We started writing each other letters, pen pal stuff. And she was giving me ideas in my head, planting the seed that there's a country called Australia and you can go there. As soon as I finished school and I was 16, I told my mom that I really wanted to go somewhere else. And she asked me, where would you go? And I said, Australia. And she says, my son, go where your heart tells you. That's a big, uh, that's a big laugh to say that because my mom didn't embrace me moving to Australia well. <laughs> she still doesn't. You know, that it's... That it's Un- understandable. Yeah. That, that's so, a big laugh. So my mom told me that part, I think about four or five months later, she died. So that that was her message to me and that was her mission in her life. Wow. All right. And then when I was 17, I started working towards coming to Australia. 18, I tried and failed and then started working hard. All the things that I was doing for some weird reason, I knew I needed to end up here. Six years ago, I applied, I got the visa, and I came here. So you come to Melbourne, because that's where you live, isn't it? I came to Melbourne yeah. straight up. I haven't moved from here ever since. Wow. wow. And then you, sh- then you, you know, by, by the faith, stumbled into the Christmas party. Exactly. Yeah. And I met my wife there, and beautiful. now we've got a beautiful daughter. And last year, I did then go on a mission to find that lady that was the yeah. teacher. yeah. Right, and we met up, and I told her the whole story. She cried, and I cried too. It's a big story. Um, does it give you peace to know everyone's purpose in their life? Does it, it does, does it bring comfort? It, yeah. Sometimes it scares me because half the time I'm afraid then to commit to somebody else because then they might just have their mission, and if they play their part, then they go. Wow, wow. that's that's a big thing. That's um, is that part of your spirituality that you were growing up with? Like uh, it's you it's, know it's, it's it sounds so tribal. It sounds so incredibly cool and exotic. You know, it's it's very it's very no, it's Indiana not, Jones. I, I don't think so. It's something that I think I've just because you can only connect the dots looking backwards. Mm-hmm. You cannot connect the dots looking forwards. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and every time I'm connecting these dots, I can notice that every single person that I've ever dealt with. I look at why I'm not longer in connection with them. Either are they living or are they dead? And what did they particularly do that they serve their purpose? That's incredible. That's uh, amazing. Right. Wow. (laughs) Thank you for sharing that. I I knew that you would have an interesting story, but thank you for your honesty. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, I feel really touched by it. And your mom would be so proud of you. I'm sure she would. You know. No, she definitely would because yeah. she she knows that she told me to follow my heart and yeah. and ever since I've always been um, everything I work on really I put my full heart in it and if I don't feel like anything is gonna work it won't and I've never been wrong about that. So it's uh, it's the intuition, isn't it? It beca- yes becomes intuition. Yes. So how did you end up in your business? Yeah, you, you are NLP practitioner and. Uh, in our conversation earlier, you mentioned you studied um, like uh, internet advertising or like technology. Um, right. How did you end up setting up in your home studio? Because now we have like big microphone and lights, and uh, you got um, 
you got your your system of why everything sits in particular place. Um, how, uh, how did you end up in there? And um, also, you have quite a big, hard to ignore presence on the on the internet. I've so I saw a post today, and you are wearing like bright blue uh, suit. So you always wear a suit for you know people who don't see you. You can't see you. You are like the most stylish gentleman on the internet. <laughs> and uh, you are on like bright orange background <laughs> and uh, you also have dreads so it's like whoa you know it's uh, so many things to look at it's um you have really genius marketing the way you um you are presenting yourself to the world can you just uh can you just uh, you know for people who don't know you can you just uh tell us how you got to this place to be such a such a star of uh, social media, really, and and working from home, making it all happen. Well, thank you so much. So, so essentially, like I said, I I really started off from Zimbabwe, came into Australia with nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams. But I knew my place was not where I was. Um, the first thing I did was work in a restaurant um, that you know was an Italian restaurant, and I was working in the kitchen washing the dishes. For about three months, that was my job. And then I then realized that they did not have any Facebook or any social media presence. And I talked to my then boss and I told him, I could help you with this. I mean, I know a thing or two about Facebook. For about six months, we were working together and he was really liking the results. So in the process, I kept studying things that would make me uh, know more if he asked me any questions on what should we do now, what should we do mm. now. And he then gave me the opportunity to actually have a full-time position as his um, social media guy, okay? But there came a time when um, we were working with a program called Urban Spoon, and Urban Spoon got bought off by another company, and um, it was an aggregator for restaurants, and he liked seeing his name on top. Mm. And when Urban Spoon stopped being a thing, he found out that I didn't, he didn't need me anymore, and you know, he sort of uh, let me go. But I'd already learned all these things and I'd already started studying the market and trying to figure out, you know, what else is happening out there. And I then just didn't stop learning because my heart told me something was was going to happen. So this is where I was supposed to be because I tried all the other things. Um, um, you know, you're always presented with an opportunity every Friday. You know what I mean? <laughs> so... So I just started really working on what was then the future. I think I heard um, a speech by uh, Steve Jobs when he was talking about how Apple was going to be for the visionaries and how, you know, the misfits and those people square in a, mm. in a, I, a lo hole. I, lo I love that one. Love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and he started talking about, you know, you just want to pave your way through and, you know, what would happen is a lot of people won't know what's happening, but they will soon follow. So I just started really, really, really trying to help other people figure out this whole internet space because I had so much knowledge. And, and I and realized... So much, and so much practice for working for someone else. So yes. you had such advantage where, you know, so many people are starting now and they have no idea how to handle social media, their presence. I mean, it's so overwhelming. It's so competitive. You, that was such a gift um, but back in the day. Um, I imagine that would give you such a big uh, self-esteem, really. Um, you know, trust in your own abilities, uh, which is a big plus because lots of people don't have it when they start. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that what makes you different? Because you, you know the pain, what you have to go through, so, you know, uh, setting it up and making it, uh, making it to the visibility. How many followers do you have, by the way? They have a lot, don't you? <laughs> I don't. I don't like calling them followers. I, um, I like calling them my friends. Like a friend. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> each, each and every, each and every person that I'm dealing with or that I get in contact with is human. Mm -hmm. They have blood going through their veins. They have their own story. They have pain that's going yeah. through. You know. And and you and you really connect with them. Uh, so that was that was the wrong term because. I know that you really interact with everyone and, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a part of your tribe and I can see that it's very personable and, you know, I, I feel like I know you. So, uh, yeah, that is, that is the way to do it. But uh, you, you have quite a big network. 
don't you? Yeah, it, yeah. it is big. Yeah. The thing is, I have to appreciate everyone because they afford me this lifestyle. Mm. If I'm not friends with anyone that is going to give me their credit card, then I'm not going to be making the people around me happy, which is what I treasure the most. Okay. And also the fact that I have come into Australia as a first generation of my generation of the Tarovingas, I have to set a precedent for the generations to come. Wow. Yeah. The one thing I'm afraid of is when I'm 85, my grandkids are sitting around and they've got no food to eat and they're asking me, why did we even leave Zimbabwe? Mm. So I'm not going to be able to answer that question. So that's the reason why I'm working with the people I'm working with to make sure that all these people, if they're going to come to my funeral, at least they would tell my grandkids that your granddad was the man. Are you, are you going to keep your dreads? I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to imagine you as a granddad. <laughs> is that, I is usually that a plan? Keep, I, keep, I keep debating on that. Sometimes it will come a time when maybe I get tired of them. You'll be like uh, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> He's very cool. He still yeah, used to. <laughs> yeah, they, they get a bit messy sometimes or they get caught in a jacket mm. or in a tie and it's, it's a whole big story. But... I, I like them. They they make the difference in, in me. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're your brand. Yeah. I think it's wonderful that you're mentioning that uh, you want to set up example for a generation because that's, you know, you see so many migrants who, you know, who are like third, you know, second, third generation and uh, um you you can still see that there is not big um they don't they, they don't really still have a big roots in australia and uh and you know wealth really um i arrived with the backpack as well i was <laughs> you know uh in 2000 and uh yeah it's a it's it's a big thing because i don't want to um i don't want to struggle through life and uh um, not, yeah. not have anything to offer to my son and to his family. Uh, but You're doing well right now. You're leaving something for the future generations, which which I think is going to be, you know, treasured. It's, it's a legacy, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. We, we're, leaving, we're leaving in the most documented generation in internet history. Mm. Now, what's going to happen is you might have your parents somewhere else, but they're not really present on social media. The generations that are going to come, it's all going to start from you. All right. They're going to trace their descendants or their lineage from you. So you don't want to be that person that they're looking at going, oh, what did he even do? <laughs> well, you know? I, I didn't think about it. It's really cool because, you know, just to see, I'm sure your daughter is the same. To see my son being so proud to see me uh, public and uh, interacting with people, I think it's the best example we can, not just you and I, but, the, you know, we all can set and sort of really be the role model for our children. Um, is, that, is that something that you, that you use as a part of your training, uh, the, the family awareness, the, the life awareness in your clients? What I want of my clients is so that they have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Mm. Now, you can't enjoy a business if your home area is not happy. Absolutely. You, the people yeah. around you, this is the reason why we wake up every single day. This yeah. is the reason why we are working so that those that depend on us are going to enjoy their life and us seeing them happy is what makes us grind a whole lot more. So some people really need to figure out what their why is. Mm -hmm. And my why really is, I've done it for myself, right? Now it's now for the next generation, for the next generation, for the next generation. Because you can never amass or you can never bring whatever material wealth back to you in the funeral in the funeral home have you ever seen a hearse mm. with a trailer mm. yeah that that funeral car mm. do you ever see it pulling a trailer you never see it pulling a trailer <laughs> you leave all your material possessions here but the impact that you have lasts forever i wonder where all this is coming from you know um do you have 
you, you, you must be very extraordinary like, compared to your friends. And, you know, uh, do, you have, do you have other friends who got inspired the same way, you know, like with the Australian teacher? Did you see, um, you know, did you see someone else doing similar thing from your background? Or are you just uh, just a star? Because <laughs> you are. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think um, I'm so... F I don't want to brag, but I think I'm so far away from everybody. I'm in a different time zone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's, it's things that I, I am so aware of how I want it all to end. Yeah, it's the dream, isn't it? You know exactly yes. what you want. Yeah. Exactly, you yeah. know, and, 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 and since my mom is not there to push me back or say, oh, son, I think you've done well, I'm always going to be wanting to please her. But if you don't have anyone to please, you, you never know when to stop. <laughs> that is brilliant. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you did yeah. say that your mom was not happy with you coming over to Australia, right? I don't think she's happy with anything, to be honest. <laughs> but, so, and yes, maybe she'll, yes. she'll listen to this. We don't want her thinking that. But if I had that in my family, mm. if I had that in my family, then maybe I would be stopped a little bit back and say, you know what, maybe let me go see them or let me, let me see what they're doing and, mm. you know, interact. Mm. But now the fact that there's nothing, I'm just being the full force and right. pushing my family towards and creating all these little experiences for my family because everywhere we go, we've got a jar of sand that I'm going to give my little girl as an 18th birthday present of all the places we've been to, maybe that she can't remember, but we picked up a bit of sand from there. We, we enjoyed, we stepped on that sand, we lived at that part of the world, so we're mm -hmm. bringing that part of the world back into her life. So so that's that's the one thing that, a lot of people don't have a lot of people have family restricting them from going further. Yeah. 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 And that it's so good. You're mentioning it because I have a lot of friends and a lot of friends who are creative and they are, they are so incredibly restricted. And it's really only when I start to talk about my own restrictions um, that they open about theirs and, you know, it blows me away how, what people allow, uh, you know, to, for their controlling parents, for example, or families that are still overseas and they're not happy for them to be here and build life independent of them and of their culture. Um, it, I find that absolutely fascinating as a phenomena. You know, it's like such a, you know, you are, you are like this kid in the grown-up body, but you are, still, you are still playing the role of the child and it's, it's incredibly um, limiting and uh, I used to have that in the past and it's only when I made the decision to really live for, for myself and for my son and create a future because I deserve it. I deserve to have a shot on, uh, you know, live the life my way on my terms. Uh, not everyone's happy with it, but that's the consequence, you know. I'm happy to follow my path. But I think it's so inspiring to hear this because... Uh, you cannot create momentum if you are constantly attached and you're pulling back and you're just uh, trying to please others so you can go and then do your little thing. And, you know, and what families do, it's they, they also feel really entitled to share their entitled, opinion. Entitled, yes. yes. <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, it's like unwelcomed opinion. It's like, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yes. You know, you know you, you're, you're definitely right about that. Family... Because you know what? Humans, we're creatures of habit, okay? And when we're used to you being a certain person, Petra, mm. we don't want that dynamic to change. Yeah. All right? We don't want to have to look at you in a different way. So if you go in and start your own business, then that means we have to start respecting you or something. Mm. We can't then come to your house because you're too busy working on your business. So unconsciously, they would then want to protect their own egos by limiting you from going ahead because then it would then change the way they look at you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, when, I, when I've started my, my personal brand and all this and starting doing Facebook Lives, 
my mom didn't know what to think about it, and she thought I'm 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 like trying to date someone. That's why I'm pretty, right. <laughs> because it's uh she doesn't speak English well, and it's it's a different world that you know the internet global community, uh, how people operate, and that you can really have. Um, What's interesting is, um, and maybe you can explore that a little bit more with me, um, for my mom, who hasn't grown up with computer, only uses it at work, it's a nuisance to her, you know, she's very much hands-on, working in the country, uh, she does not have the need to connect with people on the internet, only with us, you know, seeing on FaceTime, she doesn't understand that you can actually have a meaningful, real, emotional experience with someone, like, you right. know, like we talk now, but I feel like it doesn't make a difference. And if I was physically presented, you know, in exactly. the in the room, in the room, yeah. Um, how do you how do you see this cyber reality being being really real? You know, like feeling the person, feeling aligned with the person. How how do you how would you explain that? You know, I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people who don't live on the internet as much as we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the the internet is is greatly become a means to get in touch with pretty much anyone within the whole wild world, right? And it has shortened the span of how people communicate because back in the time I would have written you a letter and then we would have arranged this meeting over two weeks. And by the time we do that, it's over a phone call and I've got a machine that has to record this phone call. And by the time you fix it, it's it, it we've shortened all of that. Mm. Okay. And it now becomes humans are still the same. We're still, we need to connect with other human beings in order to thrive. But there is no teaching of that anywhere of how you can actually have friends and really connect with people. That's why people are always fighting. That's why there's always wars. And that's why those that belong to a certain religion think that's the only thing that has to survive in the space of life. We are always seeking our own significance. All right. So if her significance is threatened by not knowing something, she'd rather not know it. Mm. All right. So she would rather stay with what she knows and be comfortable in that because it offers her significance. If you're going to be forced to drive a plane right now, you will feel intimidated because you've never done it. Mm -hmm. All right. So people just need to maybe stay in whatever lane they're in and cultivate on the relationships that they can with the systems that we have. That's why you can privatize your Facebook or your systems or you can make them public, mm. depending on what sort of a person are you. Are you an introvert or are you an extrovert? Are you welcoming to people? It's fine. If you're welcoming, what are you going to welcome them to? Is your heart open enough to allow other people to come in? Because 95% of the time, we're always thinking about ourselves. 95% of the time, we're always thinking about what's in it for me. If you don't have a heart that can give or help other people it's going to be hard for you to connect with other people i, I guess my angle was you know people not seeing a uh, value of those online connections as a real friendships as a real communication uh that you know the only physical interaction is meaningful um you know for example i live here in the you know middle of australia or kind of middle you know in the capital city there are not many like-minded people here for me to connect. I prefer to connect with the whole world from my office. And yes, it's, it's, a, it's a solo work, you know, it's, you work in solitude. I love it. Uh, I prefer to work in solitude and, you know, kind of connect on demand. But these connections are real. You know, I, I know yes. that I would be really happy to meet with these people. And in fact, I'm going to meet with some of them in the future. And uh, there's not going to be weirdness because we already figured each other out and we, you know, we already understand each other. I think there is, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say that there is value to internet and to Facebook, especially because that is like so easy. Everyone has a Facebook. Uh, yep. th that there, yep. is, there is value to people um, being connected and expressing you know, although in a limited way, because not everyone is brave enough to comment and seeing everyone else 
you know, like family and friends, what they connect, what they commented on. <laughs> that's why that's why the private groups are so brilliant that people are safe. Um, but you know, uh, from your from your point of view, how real are those internet connections and uh, you know expressions like? What role does it play in people's everyday lives? When you okay. you know, like when you send your beautiful messages and every night you have a question that that it's quite, you know, provocative and I always feel like responding. Um, it, it does something to me, to my imagination. You know, it's real. Um, how, do, how do you feel it? How do you see it? It depends where your heart is. Mm. In any society, even if you're on a train or in a train in real life scenarios, some people are in there just happy to go to work. Some people hate where they're coming from. Some people are not even connected to why they're in the train and where they're going. Some people are just so excited about life, mm -hmm. you know? So that's what you also find in social media. It's right. all those mindsets. Some people just don't know what they want out of yeah. any interaction. And if you do come in with intention that you are here to help people's businesses, um, you know, profitable and enjoyable, that's all the message you're going to be giving out. You're not going to be worried about what other people are killing each other in Bujumbura or in Pakistan, because that's not, that's not your psyche. You know what I mean? So it depends on where, where you are placed as a person, mm -hmm. what what your intentions are, who what are you hoping to achieve for yeah. yourself, for others and for humanity? It's a, it's like a supermarket, isn't it? Like you can yeah. you can go there and pick up, you know, I feel bored today or, you know, for example, I have on my Facebook feed only interesting people that I find incredibly inspiring that right. I'm, I'm actually curious and to, I want to be stimulated intelligently, you know. Uh, yes. so I got rid of all the junk, but, you know, I used to binge on Facebook just to escape and all this. I used to, you know, scroll through, there was ad for dresses and I would scroll on it for like half an hour, just woo, like, you know, just wonder. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, you're right. It's interesting. Everyone is using it for different purposes. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's the, <laughs> that answered itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. you, you might have different intentions you might just yeah. be there to really seek connection with people that mm. you want to help some people are just murderers in their head and that's all that comes out of their work so it depends on what influences you have been what kind of a person are you mm. you know and that that then shines out in what you share who you're connected with and how people relate to you it's uh, i agree and it and it does show your true nature you, you cannot fake you know over a period of time who you yeah. are it will and, catch up with you yeah absolutely and always when i have new requests or you know new friends requests i don't accept anyone anymore i go and see if we have, we have any mutual friends and i look at their history you know if it's consistent if it's if it feels like them because i don't want i don't want any crap you know i don't want the guys from germany trying to date me <laughs> i had that few times germany you know wow it's <laughs> but um that's uh that is that is so cool uh, i have a last question no actually there was a question i wanted to ask you yes. are you are quite skilled in the martial arts <laughs> um, have you have you grew have you grow up do it was was that was that your your childhood was it uh, was it something you always done no, I took training for it. Right. When I was in, in Australia. In Australia. You look, so in the you, last six months. You look very believable. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, there are people who do it like most of their lives. Um, what, what do you like about it? Does it, have a, does, it have a, does it help you with the business, with the mindset and uh, with the intention? I was a big follower of Bruce Lee. And uh, he has this quote that water can be anything. You can put it in a glass. It takes the shape of a glass. You can freeze it. It becomes ice. You boil it. It becomes steam. You leave it moving on mountains. It can create valleys. Mm. All right. And he says in that statement, be water, my friend. Mm. All right. So that was my 
recreation of being water. Everything I go out and do, I usually make sure I leave it at the top at the top best. I've went in and done modeling, and I think you're probably going to see me in a lot of commercials on TV and stuff like that. Um, I'm taking my pilot's license right now for no reason. I, I don't know why I need it. Maybe I'm going to buy a jet, jet when, I'm, when I'm older. Definitely it's just, should, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just things like that for me in life that if I put my mind to something and it's, I, I, I just go for it and I, and I have to come out the absolute best at it. Mm. Mm, but, and, and I think it just shines through your work. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to keep you any longer. We, we chatted for 50 minutes. Thank you so much for this. Can you just tell me where everyone can find you on social media? Like, what's your website and uh, what's, your, what's your Facebook group? Great, sir. All right. So, just look up Prosper Tarwinga, the one with the biggest smile. That's me. But my <laughs> website... <laughs> <laughs> my website is uh, www.livelongdigital.com.au www.livelongdigital.com.au but it's just Prosper Tarwinga on all social medias um, there might be a few phony ones but you will tell the one that has just been speaking to you for the past one hour yeah and you were hard to miss that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for for this beautiful heartfelt interview and uh you know I feel so inspired and uh you you have beautiful energy and uh I'm sure I'm sure you will change people's lives with your you know with your approach because Well uh, I hope so too and Petra be water my friend I love that yeah because I I love I love Bruce Lee so thank you so much and have an awesome day Great stuff all right